Court, uh, in, in a, you have just a story, because right? I, I hear, hear these, I've got stories and I'm going to probably share a little bit later, but just where this has affected a patient, something, uh, several of my pharmacists have talked about how they've had uh, pay, you know, customers that have been coming to them for, for years and then get a disease that they can't keep the medicine because it's too right. expensive. Right. Have you there some examples like that where this kind of legislation would help? Well, there's no question about it. You know, as I said earlier, I'm a free market guy. All I want to do is compete. And I want to compete on a level playing field. Let me compete. You know, when I first entered pharmacy before PBMs became so vogue and, and became such a big part of this, it was pretty easy in the sense of being in business in pharmacy because all you had to do was be nice to the people. <laughs> I mean, it was about customer service. It was about taking care of the patient. And that's what we're talking about, taking care of the patient. I, I told you earlier, I've had generations of families that trade with me. Grandparents, parents. I want to jump in right here on this. And because and, and one of the things what you said there, how many, and my own, if you have a story, we'll, we'll yeah. pop it. Have you had a story, and like I've had, where uh, and my own family member had an issue and we were discussing medication. I knew the doctor, I could call, but I, the, my first call was to my pharmacist because I said, I knew I could get him, I knew he would answer. And, and at the time, and this was amazing, was my parents didn't buy their drugs from him. But yet he picked up the phone, he heard my complaint. Is that sort of what you see and what you've seen Definitely. as well? Oh, there's no question about it. In fact, I, I've experienced it. Look, I've been a community pharmacist for, you know, for, as, for 34 years. I've been in business for myself for uh, almost 28 years now. I, I, I live near where my pharmacy is. I live less than five miles away from it. I'm a member of that community. I was mayor of that community for nine years. For nine years, I was mayor. I served in the state legislature, represent them now in Congress. And, you know, I've gotten calls in the middle of the night. And, and what's interesting and, and what I, I has been very rewarding for me professionally is that when I ran for office and I would be knocking on doors and I'd introduce myself, I know you, I know you. You helped my mother when she was under hospice care. You got up and went to the store and met me there one night and got her medication. Yep. Now, let me tell you. That makes you feel good. Well, it, it does. And I think that's the, again, when you get into this, it's about people. It and, is. And, and politics and, and, and drug, you know, the drug stores of people. These are the people you meet. Every, it's about politics. It's about people. It's those P words. It's people. It's policy. It's, it's those kind of, what kind of things have you heard, Ms. Lozbeck? I just want to say one thing. Um, pharmacists are among the most respected yes. folks in all of America. And there's a reason for that. Now, now, Mr. Carter, I, I realize you went from being a pharmacist to being a congressman. I, I, my question, we do, que uh, we do question that. My question is yeah. judgment about, about that kind of a transition. But, but none the, and, and you're finding out about that. But nonetheless, look, every single time I go to a pharmacist, it's the same thing. They care. They care about their patients. I, again, I, I have so many stories that I could, you know, take forever for me to recount all the stories, all the pharmacies I've gone to in my congressional district over the last nine years. I have 24 counties. Yeah. I have a lot of local pharmacies, as you might imagine. And those pharmacists are the most respected folks, in the, among the most respected folks in the community. They're right up there at the clergy. And, and uh, so that's, that, that tells you something about them and about their profession and about how folks look up to them and about how folks depend upon them, as you just said. They're the folks who get called when about their prescription. Yeah. They're the folks. They're the folks who can be reached most easily. Other professionals can be reached, but can be reached. But pharmacists are right there at the ready, and that's very important. Uh, it is, and I think what we're, we're talking about here tonight, and, and, and if, you're, if you're following and tracking, we can talk bills, we can talk regulations, and those are great things we need to. But at the bottom line, is what is best in the healthcare arena. From, right. from the whole perspective, you did a great job, Reverend Carter, about talking about the doctor and, the, and all the different agents coming in together. But at the bottom of the line, I'll never forget growing up. The story, you know, it, for me, it was when you got to the pharmacist, you were, you were getting better. One, I had gotten through the doctor's office. I'd gotten my shot or I'd gotten whatever. But I got to the pharmacist, just give me some medicine. Let me go home. Even if it, you know, back then there was some tasting bad stuff. I don't know where that came from, but it was. But I remember those. But I remember going in, and they would take time, and they would care. I remember, I, and I still in my district, in many of your districts, can go in and look at the community pharmacist that was on the square. A lot of them had lunch counters. A lot of them had, you know, other things, you know, that they little sold cards and trinkets. What is amazing to me today is I do not want to see 
through consolidation and corporate work that is a system that has a fingerprint on the scale where government has basically allowed this to happen to start taking away the centerpieces of American squares. When you start taking away the centerpieces of, of squares and of lots and of communities, both big and small, when you start doing that and we are part of the problem, That's right. it's time we start educating everybody exactly we can. Right. You still see that? I, I do see that. And I want to... Excuse me, I want to mention just just two things. First of all, as an American taxpayer, you can imagine me being in business and having what we what we call taxation without protection. Here we have Medicare Part D plans that are paid for and supplemented through the government that I pay taxes to. But my business is not allowed to participate. Mm -hmm. I'm being taxed. I'm paying my taxes, doing what I'm supposed to do. It's being used for a plan that excludes my business. How fair is that? I'm not asking for anything special. All I'm asking for is an even playing field. Another thing that I want to mention is that I have intentionally not mentioned the names of PBMs. There are some good PBMs, and, and it's not the company that that I have the problem with as much as it is the process and the model. I mean, I, I, I it, that's, that's very important to understand. We're talking about the model here. But I will tell you this. There have been numerous instances where companies think they're going to be saving money, and the PBMs have misled them into thinking they're going to save money. Well, let me tell you, these are some of the most profitable businesses around. Hey, can I get a jump in right here? Because this sure. is something, and you may have heard, this is something, I'm going to go where, you know, I agree with there's some great PBMs out there that do work. And I think by not, you know, we're not just saying here, but PBMs, you know. But the other thing that bothers me, and I've heard this from my pharmacist, and, I'd like, and you've, I know, experience we've talked about, and Ms. Lovesack as well, is my pharmacists, my community pharmacists are scared to say something. Mm -hmm. They're scared to talk about what is actually going on because they are scared their contracts will get canceled. Yep. They're scared that they'll get another audit. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not a pharmacist. You can't audit me, and I'm going to stand here and talk about it for the pharmacist because they can't. That's wrong. That's right. And anybody that wants to say that, is that's right, I don't understand that. But when you got pharmacists who are just honest, hardworking people who are trying to run independent businesses and they're scared to talk about their vendors, to work a workable plan? What are we doing here? And guess this should what? be easy. And it doesn't serve any of us. It certainly doesn't serve any of us in the end because those folks are the ones who are serving us. And if they are suppressed, if their voices cannot be heard, that stifles competition. It goes back to the market. And, and, it stifles I, competition, and that's not good for any of us no. in the end. Well, and when, they, you know, when things change and they say we can't give input because we're scared, that, that there's, that's just a problem. Um, I'm going to get ready. We got, we're coming up on our time of closing. Any last comments, Mr. Lovesack, on that? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Collins. Thank you, thanks again for inviting me in, Mr. Carter. I really do appreciate this. And, and uh, as always, Mr. Carter, I, I've learned something tonight from a pharmacist. I always do, and I really appreciate your comments. Um, I just want to touch upon sort of the issue of the, the square, the city square. That's so important in so many of our rural districts, as, as you folks know all too well. It's kind of hard to, to explain that to our more urban colleagues, but we have to do the best that we can. Um, but the, a pharmacy is so absolutely critical for the economy of a small community. Yes, it's absolutely critical and necessary to serve the population in the area, but it's important for the economy as well. You know, we have a, a pharmacy, Mahaska Drug, in Oskaloosa, Iowa. It's off the square a little bit, but it is such an important institution in its own right. Every Christmas they have wonderful decorations. They have things to sell for Christmas. I mean, people come to depend upon them to do the kinds of things they've done, provide not just the pharmacy services, but other things as well. If they were to go under as a pharmacy, I'm not at all sure that they would survive, and that community would suffer as a result. Folks' choices would be lessened. Their tradition would be hurt. It would be a disaster in many ways for so many of our local communities for those pharmacies to close down. And I, for one, am with you. I'm not willing to accept that. Uh, I'm as I possibly can with right. you, and we're going to do it together holding hands across the aisle, which, as you know, doesn't get done a there lot around go. here. But when we can come together, I think it's important for us to do that. So thanks again for organizing this.